Welcome back, compadres. I'm Brandon Tolbert, and today we're talking natural gas engineering. In the natural gas industry, gases don't always behave like ideal gases. To account for this, we calculate a compressibility factor. This factor is used in process design calculations and petroleum calculations. But it's not always easy to get that value. It requires calculating some values from equations and using graphs. This doesn't exactly help us when we need to apply it with simulation. So guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to code a correlation, the Hall and Yarborough correlation to determine the Z factor in one step. And we're gonna do it in Excel VBA. So let's get started. So let's get started. So if you look right here, this is what is traditionally used to determine Z factor of a gas, of a real gas. And this is the standing in cats chart. So essentially to get the Z factor, you would ha have to calculate a pseudo reduced pressure and a pseudo reduced temperature. Find where those values intersect on this line. And then you go across on the Y axis and determine your Z factor. This doesn't take into account, say like if you have H2S or nitrogen or CO2 in your gas, you'd have to go to another equation and then go back and, and, and correct your Z factor. So you can see this is kind of a tedious approach. You would have to go up and it's it's not a real clear graph, but you could get an approximate value, but you know, it, it's not easy. It's It requires some labor to get it. And that's not practical for simulation. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to code the Hall and Yarborough correlation to determine Z factor. This is one of the more accurate Z factor correlations and that's why I'm sh presenting it um, because it can have a direct application to your process design and petroleum engineering calculations. So let's go test it. So what I've done is I've taken a literature value of the Hall and Yarborough correlation coming from the natural gas engineering handbook and you can see here this is the value they calculated and I've set up over here to the left, the temperature, the pressure, the specific gravity from this book as shown right here. And they didn't have any into or nitrogen or CO2 or H2S, but I'm gonna make that z I'm gonna go ahead and make that zero and let's compare the values and see what we get. So what I've done is I've coded it as a VBA function and the code is obviously posted on my website. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and test it. So it's called Z Factor Hall in Yarborough. And so if I click up here, it takes temperature, pressure, specific gravity, the nitrogen mole fraction, the CO2 mole fraction, and the H2S mole fraction. And temperature is in degrees Fahrenheit and pressure is in PSI. So let's go ahead and put in these values. And I'm putting in zero for these. And bang, that's the value I get. So right there. If we compare that to this value down here, Check it out, man, we are pretty dang close. So that value is gonna be 0.977 This is the literature value. And so I'm gonna change that to a number. Literature value. So as you can see, man, we're, we're pretty dang close. That correlation is almost exactly what's given in literature. So what's actually going on behind the scenes here? Where did I get this correlation? Well, I got it from this book right here. It's called the Petroleum Production Engineering, a Computer Assisted Approach. And so what you're gonna find here, this is the cover right here. It kind of tells you how to code it, but it's not real clear. If you go to chapter two, and go down a little ways. You'll see here, this is where it has the correlation and it shows you kind of 
the equations that go behind it. And so that's this is what I'm using right here. So let's go step into the code so that you guys can see what I did here. So this is the entire code right here. It's it's pretty lengthy, but it's not too bad. So essentially what you do is it takes inputs of temperature, pressure, specific gravity, and mole fractions, and you go through and you calculate your pseudo-reduced pressure, and it goes down here, and this is the function, uh, pseudo-reduced pressure, it steps into this function, and let's just go ahead and step into it. It'll be easier to show, so I'm going to put a breakpoint up here, I'm going to do this. So what it does is if I press F8, I can step through the code. You can see here I go calculate a pseudo-reduced pressure, and it steps down here, and it calculates that. So this is an equation in that book, and it calculates the pseudo-reduced pressure. Then I go and calculate the pseudo-reduced temperature. And so it steps into this function right here, and you can see this is an equation from the Hall and Yarborough correlation calculates the pseudo reduced temperature. I added 460 because this is I needed the temperature in degrees Rankine. And so I do that and then I go through and I calculate the inverse of the pseudo reduced temperature. This is one of the equations and you can see here I step through it and then I go calculate the rest. And this these are the equations I use. This is A B, C, D, you just look in the textbook and it'll tell you what those equations are. And then this is what you have to do. You have to use apply newton rapsum to determine your z-factor. And it explains that in the book, but this is something I did on my own. So essentially I have a counter here to say, okay, I'm going to go a thousand iterations. If I reach a thousand iterations, I'm just going to step out because newton rapsum may not converge all the time so I use that as a safeguard to make sure I get out of my loop and so what I do here is I calculate uh, this is my Newton Rapsum equation review numerical methods if you don't know what it is but it's basically the function value over the derivative of the function value and so what I do here is I go ahead and I step in and use my function value I calculate it this is an equation from the book and so I calculate that, and then I calculate the derivative of that function. And then I say, okay, this is my termination criteria. So if my error between my new and my old value is below 0.05%, basically, then I'm going to exit and say that's good, call it good, that's my value. And so I step through and I set the old value equal to the new value because this wasn't satisfied, and then I continue to step through it. And so eventually if I just press F5 it'll run and it gets me a value so that's how I do that and so you can see here it agreed with a literature value now I'm gonna go verify it with results from this book there's a spreadsheet you can use and um, so I'm gonna you can find that online and I'm gonna take that spreadsheet and compare the value so let me pause the video for a second so this is a spreadsheet online for the the textbook right here. And so I'm going to warn you that there was errors in this spreadsheet and I corrected those is basically right here with the pseudo reduced temperature. It had the this cell right here and that's not correct. It should have been up here and also it added 460 to this that shouldn't have been in there. Okay, because you can see here it already corrected that value, it converted it to degrees Rankine, okay, essentially 275 plus 460, you get that result. So what I can do here is I can put in mole fractions, I wanted to demonstrate that because the textbook problem didn't have that, so we can change this to 5%, 5%, five percent, five percent, five percent, you can find the spreadsheet online and just make sure you correct that. And so you press solution, it calculates a value right here, z factor. So I'm going to do the same with my equation. So let me pull in my code and do that. 
So I pulled in my code here, and let's go ahead and s compare the results. Let's go ahead and put in our temperature, pressure, specific gravity, mole fractions. And so check it out. So this is the value calculated by the author. And it's pretty dang close to what the correlation I coded equals to. So let's go ahead and change the pressure. Let's change it to 8,000. And let's go ahead and change the temperature to 350. Change the specific gravity to 0 0.8 and change this up a little bit. Let's change this to maybe, I don't know, 0.1, 0, and recalculate. And so check it out. This is the value from the textbook, and this is the value I calculate. And I can take basically, OK. So check it out. Change that. Bang, OK pretty close and we can do another value just to you know beat a dead horse I guess because you can see here we can change it to 225 change this to 0.1 0 and so bang so check it out I mean that's pretty close I, I mean I, I think that's shows you that the code is agrees with literature values and you can see here in the spreadsheet he's laid out the equations um, so if you're confused about the algorithm I would go here but uh, he's got it set up pretty well that's it guys I mean there we have it so I showed you kind of how the correlation works um, I have presented my code and you can apply this to your problems and feel free to uh, you know use my code you don't have to give me any credit but just I hope you learned something and I hope this helps anybody out there that needs to calculate z-factor because I know I've used it all the time when I was in petroleum engineering I used this correlation and it sure did help me out I didn't have to go look at values all the time and we're gonna extend this in future videos we're gonna use the same correlation to help us with other calculations such as calculating bottom hole pressure and also calculating original gas in place with P over Z uh, graphs. So I'm going to go ahead and head out guys. So I'll see you. That's it guys. We were able to code the hole in your world correlation to determine Z factor for real gases. We compared the results against a real literature value and we got identical results. So you should feel comfortable now applying this code to your problems, your process design problems, your petroleum problems, whatever you want. You can just have fun with it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Adios.